My name is Joe Malone. I'm a former MARSOC Marine, and I now teach people how to be safe against violence and violent crime. A part of what I do is firearms training. I love teaching people. I love guiding, coaching, instructing people through the process of learning how to use the number one single greatest tool that they'll ever be able to know how to use in defense of themselves or the lo their loved ones in life. So instructors, something to keep in mind. If you're a trainer or an instructor or a teacher, you need to incrementally increase, oh, thanks buddy, the stress level. Yay! Of the student. What I mean by that is for my concealed carry course in Illinois, I operate from a three tier level of stress implementation. So it's probably coined some phrase for that. But my point is, is this, is that the first day, whenever we're performing skills, very little PowerPoint, always lots of skills. Re repetition is the you know, key to mastery. But we do skills in a group setting and then I or one of my assistant instructors go around ensuring that people are performing the skill at their table in that somewhat group setting with the people next to them, making sure that they have the ability to perform and then we're giving them the little corrections along the way. The second day when we're doing skills performance, everybody does it in front of the classroom individually in the hot seat spotlight right on you. Why? Because that begins to implement a little bit of stress into their thought process. And so the week prior, because I break it up into two Saturdays, the week prior, they're in the group, they're doing their skills, I'm giving them instruction and guidance, somewhat collectively, but on an individual basis. On the second Saturday, after they've had an entire week to practice those skills at home, which by the way, if you're a teacher for Illinois Concealed Carry, I highly recommend that you break it up into two Saturdays or basically just some different blocks as opposed to day, back to back, day after day. Every student just about, from what I could tell off the top of my head, thinking back, always practices and it makes exponential difference when you go out to the gun range. But I digress. That second Saturday after they've had that chance to practice, now they're in the hot seat in front of everybody. I come up, they come up, I have them perform some weapons handling procedures and it adds to the stress level so that they're losing the ability to think cool, calm, collectively. And this is going to help them out in a lot of different ways, which I'll get to in here in just a moment. The other way that I begin to implement more stress is I use a very high tension spring. So for example, a 45 caliber Springfield XD, a tactical edition, it came out back, I don't know, like 10, 15 years ago. The spring on that thing is super heavy and it's a super bulky gun. It's a double stack 45 with a five inch barrel. And that means the students are going to have to use a lot of hand strength. They're gonna to have to work around manipulating their hand position while still maintaining positive control of the firearm, always applying the four weapon safety rules. On top of that, since the slide spring tension is so intense, they need to really apply the absolute fundamentals perfectly, bringing it close to the body pushing 80%, only pulling 20% in terms of that good strong palm grip back on the slide, having the thumb pre-positioned so that it can lock the side of the rear, all while maintaining a straight finger up and off of the trigger and the trigger guard. The, the finger cannot slip. On top of that now, I grease the gun up early in the morning, I clean it, and I leave a nice thin layer of lubricant on it, so that way, early in the day, immediately, they're in the hot seat, the stress is rolling, their hands are slipping, it's already a difficult gun to manipulate to begin with, and it increases that stress level. Why? Because later on that day we're going out to the gun range. And I wanna make sure that they're not gonna be sitting there shaking or completely blowing everything out from what we've learned the previous day. Remember, 16 hours is not a lot of time. And by the time we get out to the gun range, it's just so minimal. You want to make sure that they're capable of thinking clearly in some sort of stressful situation. And the way to do that, that I've discovered one of the best ways is to have them go into the hot seat, perform the weapons manipulation techniques, give you the weapon safety rules, recite them verbatim, all in front of the class. If they make mistakes, we call it out and we talk about them. We discuss it. That's what we're there for. We're there to make mistakes and learn from one another. And then the next person who comes up is that much more proficient. You got the difficult weapon to manipulate. So when they go back to their gun, their confidence is just soaring. They feel like they've got it under control. 
they've been in the stressful situation, so they're breathing, they're learning about breathing techniques and how to think clearly and establish those neural pathways while handling a firearm while under stress. It's the most yeah, that is the greatest foundation you can ever give anybody in firearms training. Give them a foundation that they could build up upon by instituting little bits of stress because it's always going to be a high stress situation when new people are messing with guns or when you're in a life threatening situation anyways. So now we're already conditioning their brain to be like, hey, guns are a little bit stressful, but I'm cool, calm and collected because I've handled X amount of stress so far properly and appropriately with the best guidance possible from my instructor. Then the gun's slippery, it's all greasy, it's supposed to simulate, uh, well, it's supposed to, again, implement a little bit of stress, inject a little bit more stress into the situation. The gun's bulky. So they really need to make sure that they're fine tuning their skills. It's like shooting a pistol from 50 yards away versus five. If the, any of the fundamentals are off, then the deviation when the bullet hits that target is gonna be so great that they'll most likely miss, as opposed to five yards where there could be all sorts of things wrong with the fundamentals and they'll probably still hit dead center. So by injecting these little bit of stress modules into their performance, you're ensuring they're going to be that much more capable of one, handling the gun range later, which is the third tier of stress once we're out there on the gun range, but two, also be capable of retaining that information because of the emotional tether to it and the confidence and the self-development and the fear, all that emotion solidifies new neural networks in the brain at a much faster rate, as opposed to just a mundane PowerPoint and a singular group setting technique demonstration. Lastly, when we go out to the gun range, that's that top tier level of stress. They're in the elements, it's hot out, it's cold out. I don't like to do indoor gun ranges. I hate doing indoor gun ranges because that's a little bit too much stress, I think, mentally and emotionally. But if it is what it is, it just is what it is. Try to get a corner booth or something and only have one student in there at a time while the rest watch you through the looking glass, if that's possible, depending on where you go. I don't like gun ranges because most people who run gun ranges are kind of dicks and I kind of get it. But anyways, go to an outdoor gun range, preferably your own, your own property. That way you could set up a tent and some resources. They could be out there in the elements. Be careful, especially with the new shooters, because if they're out there being exposed to the heat, even though they're in the tent, they're probably not drinking as much water as they need to. They're going to underestimate the amount of physical stress that they will be under once they're in the sun. Even if they got sunscreen and good protective clothing, this is a new experience for them. And now we're kind of getting to the point of overstimulation in terms of stress, but you've mitigated the likelihood of anything bad happening by beginning to slowly inject different stress modulators. You okay, buddy? A truck. Oh. So when they're out there on the range, this is the final stress test. Notice what they were screwing up on in the classroom. Notice what they were screwing up on at the start of the class because that's probably what they will revert to. They might have done really well in that secondary level of stress test when they're performing in front of the whole class, but they're most likely going to revert further back to their natural basic instincts when they're out on the gun range. Live fire, they're nervous, they might fail, etc. So kind of taking up a little too much time and I got to get to my kid now, but just remember this. If you're an instructor, you must be thinking about this stuff whenever you're teaching people about firearms, firearm safety. Specifically for the Illinois Concealed Carry course, I institute a three-tier stress increase or modulation, whatever you want to call it. You just begin to gradually implement stress one, by giving them the assignment of the task of weapons manipulation, and then you're kind of adjusting and going along in the group setting. If anybody has egregious offenses, you definitely call it out, but that's what we're there to do is learn. The second level is after they've had time to practice, use a very difficult gun to manipulate, grease the gun up so their hands are slipping, get them stressed out a little bit, and then guide them through the process so they can overcome it while reciting their knowledge in front of the group. And then three, have them out there on that gun range in the elements, but be aware that they will most likely revert back to the things they were screwing up back to day one, because that's just what they naturally want to default to and they haven't practiced enough. Practice, 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 lose the PowerPoints. Mastery is key to, uh, repetition is key to mastery. I love you guys. Reach out if you have any questions on how to best train your students. I'd be more than happy to help you all out. Take care.